Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Lee and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It's Wednesday, August the 15th and today, Pastor Rex will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, Faithful While Waiting. But first, please join us in some praise and worship music as we glorify the Lord.
The title of our message for today is Faithful While Waiting. And we will take this from the parable of Jesus, one of the parables in Jesus in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14, all the way to verse 30. Matthew chapters 24 and 25 are the end time teachings of Jesus. This is where Jesus gave instruction to his disciples to endure through difficult times and to live faithfully while waiting for his second coming. The parable we will read later on is part of the section that teaches the certainty of Jesus' second coming. So therefore, Jesus instructed his disciples how to live in the present time. I appreciate the prayer of uh, Brother Vern that says, we have the gift of the present. And we are to do something while we are still here, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us start studying this parable. But before we do that, this parable is called bags, bags of gold. In some other translations of the Bible, this parable in Matthew is also called parable of the talents. And that is what Luke uh, used, the talents. If so, if you hear your pastor say talents or bags of gold, I mean, I mean the same thing, okay? So don't be confused about, about me changing those two things. Uh, description of this parable. And so I titled this parable, Faithful While Waiting. Let's start with verse 14. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. We said in other parables that we dealt with, parables have a point of comparison. In this parable, Jesus is the man going on a journey. He was telling his disciples that he is going and he will be not with them for a while. In this parable, Jesus is going on a journey. That is the comparison. The servants who were entrusted his wealth are Jesus' followers those who follow him. The followers of Jesus are to wait faithfully and spread his word until his return. And that is entrusting his wealth, the master's wealth, to them. The return of Jesus is sure, but the exact time is unknown. The Bible says only that God the Father knows the time of Jesus' second coming, no one else except the Father alone. Verse 15, to one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag. It's according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. According to our parable, there are three servants and they receive shares according to their ability. Although the first receives five times as much as the last, it receives significant sum of money. One talent is equal to about 6,000 denarii. One denarius is a common laborer's daily wage. A talent would be roughly equivalent to 20 years wages for the average worker in Jesus' time. Can you imagine you were given, you or you will be given one, dena one denarius or one talent and that's equivalent to 20 years of a worker's wage. So five talents, the largest amount entrusted to any of the servants is comparable to 100 years worth of labor. Wow, that's a lot of money. 100 years, you are ready to retire the moment that talent will be given to you. 
If we will translate that to a bag of gold, a bag of gold in Jesus' time is about 75 pounds. So the worth is not in how much, but it's in the weight, 75 pounds of gold. The servant who received two bags of gold had about 150 pounds. The servant who received five bags of gold received 375 pounds of gold. That's a lot of gold for these servants. Verses 16 to 18. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So he, got, he received five bags. He went and do business with those five bags of gold and came back with another five. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more bags of gold. Verse 18. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground. We don't know how deep, but he dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. I like the words at once in verse 16. It means immediately. The servants who received the five bags and the two bags of gold went and invested in business business, this, their master's gold immediately, at once. They were faithful in doing exactly what their master expected of them. Their master expected of them to use the gold, not to hoard it. And so they went out immediately, at once, and did exactly what the master expected them to do. But, in verse 18, there is always that word, but. We do not, sometimes we, use, we, we like it, sometimes we do not use it. But, the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. That is not what his master was expecting him to do. That is not considered faithfulness, hiding your, your master's money. So the third servant was not faithful in what his master is expecting him to do. Now let's go to verses 19 to 23. After a long time, we don't know how long, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. That kind of excitement. I have five more. Five more. Wow. Maybe his eyes are even wide by telling the master, Master, here it, here it is. You gave me five. Now I'm bringing another five. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. Even, maybe even the master was contaminated by the excitement of this servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Wow, if you will be faithful with a hundred, what? A hundred years worth of salary. I think that is something worth ex being excited about, right? And he got an invitation from his master. Come and share your master's happiness. Hey, I saw some of you were smiling earlier and some of you are replying, replied to what I just said about the excitement of both the servant and the master. And so that invitation must keep you excited. Come and share your master's happiness. After the master's long absence, he returned. He discovered what each servant had done, has done with his gold. The first two servants were faithful in what was expected of them. They did business with the master's gold and doubled his money. Although the first slave earned more than the second, each has done remarkably well with what he has been given they doubled the amount of money given to them. They had performed according to their ability. The one that was given two bags of gold was not expected to earn five. 
or the one that was given ten, uh, five bags of gold was not expected to earn ten. It's according to their ability. Maybe the five, if he only earned one bag of gold, the master would be happy. Why? Because that's the ability given to them, and they used that kind of ability. But here, their ability was much more. Five earned five, two earned another two. And they had been faithful to do what the master has required of them. The master's response to it is the same to the one who earned five and to the one who earned two. It's the same response. He commends the slaves for being good and faithful. Entrust them with more authority, with more responsibilities, and invites them to share his happiness. Now let's go to verses 24 all the way to verse 30. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man. Harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Can you, can you feel the the this, this standing of the, the hairs in the master's arms or maybe even the hair. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. One bag of gold. That's what belongs to you. That's what you get. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So here comes the third servant. He gave quite a long speech about the master. He is a man who reaps where he does not sow and gathers where he has not scattered seed. Whether that information about the master is true or not, the master rebuked the servant for not being faithful in what was expected of him. And the master suggested one option for this servant that he could have done was to put the money in the bank so as to gain interest for the master. But even that did not happen. What he did was to go home, dug a hole somewhere, maybe in his backyard, put a little marker on it, maybe a small flag, and hid it right there. The third servant admits that he was afraid to lose the master's money. He was overcome by fear. To protect himself, he buried the gold in the ground. Burying treasure during the time of Jesus is a common thing. At that time, the master was disappointed. He had entrusted this servant with a portion of his property in order that the servant would use his abilities in order to turn a profit for his master. The servant was too afraid to take a risk. Instead, he attempted to secure his own safety. I will be safe. I will not lose or I will not gain. Exactly what the master gave me is the thing that I will give back. He was punished for not being faithful while waiting for his master's return. The punishment was permanent. And that punishment was awfully sad. Could you imagine to be thrown in a place of complete darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth according to verse 30? 
What was worse is that the master called the third servant worthless. You don't want to be called worthless. Either inside your home, with friends, at work, or anywhere else. You want to be something. You don't want to be called worthless. No commendation like the other two servants was given to this third servant. No invitation to share happiness with the master was given to him because the punishment was permanent and was sadly awful. We are to wait for Jesus' return. While we are waiting, we are not to be idle. We are to use the abilities and resources God has given us to serve Him. Writing music, if that's your ability, use it to honor God. Playing instruments, if that's the ability given you, use it to honor God. If it is cooking, delicious turkey, <laughs> use it to honor God, isn't it? It's that the ability given you. If it is talking with people and encouraging them, if that's the ability given you, use it to honor God. If driving is the God-given ability, then use it to honor Him. If it is just giving your best smile to strangers, and that's the ability God has given you, use it in order to honor God. If that's the ability given you, even if just one, just one, use it to honor God. If God has given you five abilities, earn five more and use them in order to honor God. And you will be called faithful. Faithful follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. We are not to be idle. We are to use the abilities and resources God has given us to serve Him. We are called to be faithful in using those abilities and resources. God is not unreasonable to expect more than what He entrusts to us, for He gives to each according to our abilities. If he has, he has given you five, praise the Lord. If He has given you one, praise the Lord as well. But He wants us to be faithful. All we have to do is to be faithful to use what He has given for the expansion of His kingdom here on earth. I trust God to do His will through me as I am faithful to do what He wants me to do. And I pray that that is your prayer as well, that you will remain faithful to God. This parable is not about money. This parable is about the master on what he expects his servants to do while waiting for his return. Jesus is the master we, the believers, are His servants. Jesus has entrusted us with the treasure of the heavenly kingdom. And may He find us faithful while waiting for His return. Pilgrims on the journey on the narrow road, and those who've gone before us line the way, cheering on the faithful, encouraging the weary, their lives a stirring testament to God's sustaining grace. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses 
Let us run the race not only for the prize But as those who've gone before us Let us leave to those behind us The heritage of faithfulness Passed on through godly lives Oh, may all who come behind us Find us faithful May the fire of our devotion light the way May the footprints that we leave Lead them to believe and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. After all, our hopes and dreams have come and gone. And our children sift through all we've left behind. May the clues that they discover and the memories they uncover become the light that leads them to the road we each must find. Oh, may all who come behind us Find us faithful May the fire of our devotion light their way May the footprints that we leave Lead them to believe And the lives we live inspire them to obey Oh, may all who come behind us Find us faithful May the footprints that we leave Lead them to believe And the lives we live inspire them to obey Oh, may all who come behind us Find us faithful Find us faithful. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that we can leave behind us evidences that we remain faithful while waiting for your coming. I pray for our church family here in Mosaic Ness. May you bless them, give them these abilities that they have, and use them for the Master's glory and honor. And I pray for those who will watch this video, that they too will discover the abilities that you have given them, and use those abilities to expand your kingdom here on earth, while we all wait for your coming. These things, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, everyone, for tuning into our Sunday service. If you've been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. Or now you can also show your support through donating at our Patreon page, which is located at patreon.com slash mosaicnaz. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your entire family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord would bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.